meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So how many of you did this when you were younger? Right? Something that you probably all, well, not all of us did, but it's, a, it's an interesting concept to think that if you talk into one end, you can hear it out of the other one, right? Uh, I can't really hear it that way. I guess the string does need to be tight. <laughs> But it's an interesting concept to talk about what God did, right? Because our reading this morning is from the book of Hebrews. Four little verses. Four little verses. That talk about what happened when God created the world. And, and what God did to help his people understand what God wanted his people to do. So it says in the beginning that God spoke through the prophets. He also spoke through who else? Does anybody know? Before the prophets were the... <coughs> Judges. We had the judges, and then came the kings who tried to lead the way that God wanted them to. And when that didn't work, God finally sent the prophets. And when the prophets didn't work, God finally sent Jesus. Right. He sent us Jesus so that Jesus could show us what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to live. This last week, I spent at Imago Day with eight of our young people, which I don't see any of them. <laughs> They must have just been so tired <laughs> that they're not even here this morning. Um, with eight of our young people and a whole slew of young people from other congregations, anywhere from seventh, I think most of them were seventh and eighth graders. And we spent the week doing confirmation stuff as congregations, but we also spent the week with them learning what it is to live in community and, and learning what it is to, to be who God has taught us to be. Um, the curriculum for this past week taught us that we need to be transformed by God. And through that, we walked through a five-day sequence of, of themes and ideas through the study that we did. And the, the five themes were, and I wrote them down just so I wouldn't forget them. Number, the first day we talked about that we should include everybody. That in God's transformation is inclusive of all humanity. Day two was compassion. And I'll get a little bit to more of that in just a little bit. Um, we should look upon our brothers and sisters with compassion no matter what's happening or where we're at. Because God looked upon us with compassion. So we need to look upon others with compassion. Day three was justice. That we need to look where there's injustice in the world and to stand up against that. Because that's what God calls us to do. Day four was forgiveness. We need to learn how to forgive, not just to forgive others of things that they've done to us, but to release ourselves from things that we hold on to that others have done to us. And the, four, the fifth day was all about generosity, about how the early church lived together and they held everything in common and that all needs were taken care of because they all lived for the same purpose. And that purpose was what Jesus came to tell us to do, to live, to love the world. To show them what God has done for them. I said I'd say a little bit more about compassion. This morning, our brothers and sisters who are following the Revised Common Lectionary are looking at the passage from Luke chapter 10. I think it starts at verse 5. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. How many of you know the story of the Good Samaritan? See, I have to go over it real quick here. There was a man who was walking on a trip. He was leaving Jerusalem. He was going down out of Jerusalem. And every time you leave Jerusalem, you go down because Jerusalem is the highest part of the world. In case you didn't know that. Right? Anytime you leave Jerusalem, you go down. If you read in the Bible, anytime anyone leaves Jerusalem, they go down. And if you go to Jerusalem, you go up. Because Jerusalem is the closest part to heaven in the Bible. So there was a man who was leaving Jerusalem. And, and he was walking down out of the city. And bandits came along. And they beat him, they stripped him, they robbed him, they left him in the ditch for dead. And as he lay there, a priest comes down out of Jerusalem and sees the man on this side of the road and decides he's going to walk on this side of the road and goes right by. And then a Levite, who's a Levite? Or what is a Levite? It's a lawyer, but not in the lawyer sense that we know today. It's a person who knows the law and has studied scriptures and works as a priestly person, but is not necessarily a priest. Someone who knows the law and knows what needs to be done, right? Someone in the church, the temple, 
who understands the scriptures wholly. And this Levite comes down out of Jerusalem and he's walking and he sees the man laying in a ditch on this side of the road and he decides to walk by on this side of the road. And then a Samaritan comes. And who's a Samaritan? What? A guy from Samaria. Right. And where is, what is Samaria? This is actually a good, this is actually something we need to understand. To understand this story. You see, because Samaria is actually the northern kingdom. When the kingdom split, the lower kingdom started calling the upper kingdom Samaritans. They are people who worship the same God that the Jews do. They are people that worship and follow the same understanding of the law and the same understanding of the scriptures that the Jewish people, this priest and this Levite and this man lying in the ditch would have. It's kind of like saying an ELCA Lutheran was beaten and robbed and left in a pit and a pastor came by and the music director came by and then a Missouri Synod Lutheran came by. It's really what I'm saying here, right? When you say Samaritan versus Jewish. Right? You get that? They worship the same God. And this Samaritan is somebody that the, the Jewish people thought didn't worship right because they didn't come to the temple. They, didn't, they worshiped on mountaintops. They worshiped wherever they could because they didn't come to the temple. They didn't do things right according to the Jews. So this Samaritan is not necessarily a good person in the Jewish understanding. But this Samaritan comes down out of Jerusalem, sees a man who's half beaten, and what does he do? He takes care of him. He puts him on his donkey, takes him to an inn, and he take, says to the innkeeper, he says, here's two denarii. If, if his bill, take care of him, and if his bill comes to anything more than this, when I come back, I'll pay you whatever you need to be paid. And the whole gist of this story is that there's a lawyer at the beginning of it who asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him all of these things, the commandments, and he said, and love your neighbor. And then the lawyer asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Right? And we expect Jesus to say, my neighbor is the person who looks like me and acts like me and, and will reciprocate me when I help them do, do something for them. They're going to do something back for me. Right? That's who this person wanted Jesus to say is my neighbor. And when Jesus said, let me tell you a story. And he said, at the end of that story, right, the priest went on the other side of the street, the Levite went on the other side of the street, the Samaritan came, helped the man, took care of him, took him someplace to continue his care. Who in this story is the neighbor? They all were. But who did what they should have done? The Samaritan. The person who showed the man compassion. Right? We're called to show everybody in need compassion. And this is a hot topic right now in our country that I'm not going to spend any time on, which might upset some of you. But if I spent time on it, it's going to upset some of you. Right? And my job is to help you understand what the scriptures say, not to start a political conversation. The political conversation is there are people being held in cages right now that shouldn't be. And yes, that was started by administrations, administrations, administrations ago. But what are we as Christians doing to stop that? You see, Jesus calls us to be compassionate and to love everybody, regardless of where they're from, regardless of what they have, regardless of what they can do for us. We're called to love and putting someone in a, in a cage is not love. And what are we doing about it? Well, you might say, well, that's on the other side of the country. Or what can I do about it? Well, there's lots you can do about it. We can pray about the situation. We can talk about the situation in a manner that allows discussion to happen. Right? Rather than saying, I'm right, you're wrong, let's actually talk about it on different, differing sides and see if there's a solution that could be come up with. Let's figure out a way to understand the legality of everything and know what Jesus is calling to us to do in and through that. 
And I'd be remiss if I didn't say something this morning about it because it's been on my mind for a week with these kids at camp thinking about what it means to be transformed and to do things the way that God has called us to do them. You see, it's all about inclusivity. It's all about compassion. It's all about justice. It's all about forgiveness and being generous with what we've been given. And then there's the Hebrew text. Because God came and spoke through the prophets and the people didn't get it. And today we can read those prophetic messages and we still say, what in the heck are you saying to us, God? But then God said, okay, fine, you don't get it that way. I'm going to send part of me to be with you. The part of me that helped me create everything that's here. The part of me that is, that is higher than any of the angels. The part of me that's going to sit at my right hand once and, once and for all, once he's completed the mission that I've sent him to do, to show you how to live. And as I told the kids up here, what did he say? There's a whole bunch of stuff that he said. But basically it boils down to two things. And they are what? Love God and love your neighbor. We've talked about this before. Love God, right? If you take the commandments, the first three go this way. You take the next seven, they go this way, right? Love God, love neighbor. It's that easy. And it's that hard. So this next series we're headed into is all about Hebrews. And I don't want to scare you away with this sermon this morning. They won't all be like this, I promise you. But it'll all be about how we live in a world and understand who we are as God's hands and feet, that we are to be part of what's happening here. How can we work for justice and compassion and inclusivity for everybody in a world that needs to see how much God loves them? So know that God loves you picked you up out of the mire and washed you off and made you clean so that you could go into the world and share what he has done for you with everybody else. And that's everybody else. Not just the people that are here, but anybody that you come in contact with. So go and share his love and let your light shine so bright that everyone who sees it sees not you, but sees your, the works that God is doing through you and the love that God has for all of creation.